Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through different Bible stories, songs, and different activities every Sabbath. If this is your first time, I would like to invite you to come back. Every Sabbath, we have a new program with different activities, and hopefully, you'll come back and you join us again. And if you're a regular, it's always good to have you here. Happy Sabbath, and welcome to Kids Connection. Today's program, we're going to help you to connect with God through a Bible story. And before we get to the Bible story, we have a couple things, and I have a story that I'm going to share with you. So hopefully, you guys stick around, pay attention, call mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, aunts and uncles, whoever you're watching with, sit down on a couch or your bed or wherever you're watching, and let's enjoy our program together. I'm going to invite you to get ready. We're going to sing a song of the day that we don't normally sing here at Kids Connection. So for some of you, we'll be a little bit different, but it's a cool song, and you guys will enjoy the song and it will connect with our story today. So let's sing it together. All right, so that was a fun song, wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed it and you sang along. Welcome back to this website every day of the week as you can continue to listen to this song throughout the week and sing it along with mom and dad. Now I'm going to invite you to bow your heads, close your eyes so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another Sabbath. Thank you for another program on the way. We ask that you be with us as we worship your name and we learn a little bit more about you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for praying with us and for being a part of another program. I can't wait to have you guys right here back at Kids Connection Space, a place where we have a lot of fun together. It may be a little bit different, but I'm looking forward to it. In today's mission story, we're going to hear about a couple, a couple that used to live in Argentina, and they travel all the way around the world and they went to a different country because they heard God's call to do something. 
let's watch our mission story and see what they are doing in Greece. We want to make Jesus famous here. This is our goal. We, we want the people to see this place as a place of refuge, as a place uh, where they can find a family, as a place where uh, they can find Jesus or a, a peace in the midst of, of the storm. See you. Bye bye. Elias and Melina left their home in Argentina and moved to the Mediterranean island of Cyprus. They became Adventist volunteers and now manage a global mission urban center of influence called Meeting Point. When you are in Christ, you are born as a missionary as well. So that's why we decided to, to, to take this challenge of being a missionary. We are trying to give all we have learned to serve others. Yo creo que es importante I think it's important to have the same method that Jesus had. First, he related to the person, saw their needs, and then preached. It's basically what we're trying to do. Use this method. Following Christ's method of ministry, Elias and Melina go door to door to find out what kind of programs their neighbors are interested in. Then they can tailor their work to the needs of the community. After just a few months in Cyprus, the volunteers have started a variety of programs at Meeting Point. I give nutritional advice, therapeutic massages, facial treatments, and things to help me grow a little closer to the people. These health programs give Elias and Melina the opportunity to connect with people who otherwise probably wouldn't walk into an Adventist church. Although many people on the island speak English, Greek is even more widely spoken. The greatest challenge here is the language. That's why we are looking forward to, to learn Greek as quickly as possible in order to communicate better with the people. They found creative ways to communicate with the Greek-speaking visitors, like using translation apps on their phones or learning common Greek phrases. When someone comes to Meeting Point, they are greeted by a warm atmosphere, refreshments, and books as they wait for their health assessment. After the assessment, visitors receive an evaluation with lifestyle suggestions and are encouraged to visit again to follow up on their progress. Meeting Point is also a place kids love. Elias and Melina host a fun activity each week and plan to expand the programs. It will be a program for kids where they will make crafts. We will make crafts, follow recipes, and play games. There's a fun part and a part where they learn something. Today's activity involves painting positive messages onto stones. The kids love doing crafts like this. But the real fun comes when they give their creations away to strangers on the street. People love receiving these precious gifts. The kids go home knowing that they've spread some joy in the community. We are sure that God is blessing this activity because we see the happiness in their faces. And we are sure that with, with time and patience and love and uh, trying to show Jesus to them, we will see many results, many people saved by this activity. So this is uh, something that makes us very, really happy. Each Sabbath, Elias and Melina lead the worship service for the church plant that gathers in Meeting Point. Some of the people here attend regularly, while others are just visiting. Your prayers and mission offerings have played a key role in making this happen. I want to give our gratitude to the worldwide church, because by your support, by your help, by your tithes, by your offerings, we are making the difference here. Thank you for supporting the Seventh-day Adventist Church and helping Adventist volunteers like Elias and Melina spread the love of Jesus to the world. Wow! Have you ever had to learn a new language and teach people about God in a different language? 
that's what they're doing and this is amazing let's go ahead and remember them in our prayers as they continue to share the, the love of god with other people and also help them with our financial support by clicking on the link above and donating to the missionaries ask mom and dad to help you do that okay now every sabbath we have a different activity that help us to connect with the lesson of the day and our lesson in our classroom today we're going to do something different. We've shared a story here with, uh, we've done experiments, we've done puppet show, we've done clips and movies. Today, I'm going to, I'm going to share a story with you. All right. Do you like stories? Do you? Yes. Good. Because today I'm going to share a nice story of a boy named Peter. Are you afraid of the dark? Are you afraid of airplanes? Are you afraid of riding a bike? Are you afraid of um, falling? Are you afraid of heights? What are you afraid of? Today's story is about a boy named Peter. He was seven years old. And Peter was afraid of something. He was afraid of dogs. Are you afraid of dogs? Yes? No? Do you have a dog at home? Do you know someone who does have a dog? Are you afraid of that dog? Are you afraid of small dogs or afraid of big dogs? Or you're not afraid of dogs at all? I'm not afraid of dogs. I love dogs. I always had dogs when I was a, I was a kid. And recently, I shared right here in Kids Connection that we got a little puppy. Her name is Rosie. Remember? I showed you Rosie. Yes. Okay. So Peter, seven year old, was afraid of dogs. Wow. He had to go to school and he used to live a couple blocks away from school and he walked to school with his friends. Now, everyone live on the same street. They would get out of the house at the same time and they had to walk to school. The problem is that on the way to school, there was a house with this big dog outside. And Peter was terrified of that dog. All the other boys loved the dog. And they always wanted to walk on the right side of the street because the dog was there and they wanted to pet the dog. But every time Peter got close to the house, he would find an excuse to cross the street and walk on the other side of the street. So he will call his friends and say, oh, let's walk on that side because there's shade on that side. And another day he will say, oh, let's walk on that side because the wind is too strong on this side of the street. And he always found an excuse to tell his friends that he wanted to walk on the other side of the street because he was afraid of the dog. He never told his friends that he was afraid of the dog. But he never crossed the street on the right side because that dog was there. It was just a few houses down and they had to cross. They had to go on that street to go to school. Their friends one day said, oh, Peter, why do you always ask to go on the other side of the street? Are you afraid of dogs? And Peter said, no, no, uh, I'm not afraid of dogs. No, no, not at all. Why don't you walk on this side of the street and you always ask us to go on the left side of the street and peter didn't want to tell them because he was embarrassed all his friends liked dogs but he didn't he was so afraid of dogs oh no and how am i going to tell them that i don't like dogs they're going to laugh at me they're going to think that there's something wrong with me but i'm terrified i don't like dogs at all one day peter had to walk to school with dad. Dad said, Peter, I'm gonna walk you to school today because I have a t I have a day off from work. I just wanna walk with you. And Peter was thinking, oh no, is my dad gonna find out uh, that I don't like dogs? How am I gonna tell dad? Oh, and he was so worried about that. But dad grabbed Peter's hand and he was walking to school with Peter. Dad saw the dog coming 
just a few houses down. And Peter was, he started to sweat. He, he started getting nervous. He started almost shaking. And he said, Dad, can we walk on the other side of the street? And Dad said, no, no, that's okay. We'll stay on this side of the street. Because I don't want to cross the street in front of the cars. There's too much traffic going on. So he held his hand and he kept walking. But Dad noticed something. That as soon as he was approaching the dog, Peter started squeezing Dad's hand tighter and tighter. And Peter started holding back a little bit. And Dad was walking in front and Peter was behind him. And Dad realized that Peter was afraid of the dog. Dad stopped for a second. He came back to Peter and he said, Peter, are you afraid of dogs? Peter didn't know what to say because he was, oh, I can't lie to my dad. I have to tell him the truth. He's my dad. He's not going to laugh at me. Uh, I hope. But, and quickly, Peter just looked at his dad and he said, Yes, dad, I am afraid of dogs. And dad said, Peter, I am not afraid of dogs. And I'm going to hold your hand and I'm going to hold you really tight. And I'm going to walk with you. And I guarantee you that that dog is not going to do anything to you. Because dad knew that dog. Peter got really close to dad. He was holding his hand really tight. And dad slowly walked by the dog. And the dog didn't do anything to Peter. Whoa! I didn't expect that, Peter said to dad. I always thought that the dog was going to attack me. That the dog was going to bite me. But no, the dog just sat there as we walked right by the dog. Isn't that incredible? Peter said dad. And Peter said, thanks dad. I'm so happy that you're walking with me and you're not afraid of dogs. He went to school. On the way back from school, dad went to pick him up. And as he was walking back to school, Peter said, dad, can we go on that side of the street again? I want to walk by the dog again because Peter felt secure that dad was with him. So dad said, sure, Peter, let's walk on that side of the street. And they were walking back home on that side of the street again. And as, as they were approaching the dog, Peter just held his, ha his dad's hand and he was looking at the dog. He wasn't that afraid anymore. And as he was walking by the dog, dad said, Peter, do you want to stop here for a little bit? And Peter held his dad's hand and he said, sure, dad. And then they stopped right in front of the dog. As they stopped there, the dog, who was taking a little nap on the sidewalk, looked up to them and he wagged his tail. At that moment, dad said, look, Peter, the dog is wagging his tail because he likes you. And Peter looked at the dog. The dog wagged the tail even more. The dog stood up. Peter freaked out a little bit. And dad said, don't worry, Peter. I am right here with you. And the dog came, snipped his foot, snipped his leg, snipped his hand. And dad said, look, Peter, you can pat him on the head now. So Peter reached out his hand with dad and he pat the dog on the head. The dog licked him on the, on the arm, licked his leg, and the dog was all happy, and Peter loved it. He couldn't believe it that the dog didn't bite him. Wow, that was incredible. And Peter said, Dad, I'm not afraid of dogs anymore. And Dad said, I told you, Peter, there was nothing to be afraid of because I was right here with you. Well, kids, 
from that day on, Peter was not afraid of dogs anymore. And he would happily walk on that side of the street with his friends to school. And every time he would walk by, he would pat the dog on the head and walk along to school. On the way back, he would pat the dog again and go back home. He became friends with the dog. And the dog was looking forward to see Peter every morning and afternoon as he was going to school and coming back to, from school because he was friends with Peter. And he knew that Peter wasn't going to do anything to him. And Peter knew that the dog wasn't going to do anything to him either. That was the end of, of Peter's frightened days of fear of dogs. Today in our classroom, we are going to learn a story about, about the Israelites, how they too were afraid of something. They were afraid of some people. And for a long time, the Israelites were afraid, not knowing what to do. Until something happened. The same way that Peter learned how to trust his father, the Israelites also had to learn how to trust God. And we're going to hear how God helped the Israelites not to be afraid anymore. So let's sing our song of the day together again that we'll talk about fear. And then we're going to listen to our lesson in our classroom by our teacher that will also explain why we are sharing this story with you today. Okay? Wonderful. Let's stand up, sing our song of the day today again, and uh, prepare for our lesson today. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your promise that we can always count on you. Thank you because even though we are afraid, you are always there. And we can count on you not to be afraid. I know that there are a lot of things going on that sometimes is very 
scary. But God, help us to trust in you. Help us to hold on tight to your hand and to know that you are there to protect us. Bless each child who's listening to this story today. Be with them and their family. Keep them safe and help them not to be afraid of the things on this earth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for joining us for another Kids Connection program. Stay tuned for our lesson today with your teacher in your classroom. And I'm so happy to let you know that this coming Sunday, tomorrow, is Father's Day. Yes, it's Father's Day. Have you prepared something special for Dad? Have you? I hope so. If not, if there's still time, ask Mom to prepare something for Dad special for tomorrow. Okay? So let's celebrate Father's Day. Let's serve breakfast in bed for Dad or uh, write him a, a card for Father's Day or um, buy him a little gift. Ask Mom to help you or Grandma or Grandpa make a surprise. Dads, Dad love surprises. Some dads, I do. I love surprises. And I hope you guys enjoy um, having fun with dad tomorrow. And if you don't have dad around with you, it's okay. Ask God and pray for dad wherever they are, whatever he is, may God be with him. Some of our kids don't have our dads with us anymore. And uh, we pray that someone in your life is being a part of or taking that responsibility as dad and helping you uh, to have someone close by. Thank you so much for joining us on another Kids Connection program. I hope that God blesses you, be with you. Don't forget to send us an email, invite kid to come by and see you at your house um, doing on Sabbath, and we'll be happy to bring kid over to visit you. Or let us know how you're doing. Send us or your picture, and I'm so happy that when we hear things about you guys and what you are doing, and I'll be happy to share those moments with kids um, right here on the air. Keep praying for our Kids Connection program. Thank you so much for all the love. I love you guys. Until next week, God bless you and keep you safe. Bye-bye.
I've been bored a little bit. Okay, I'm sure there are some other people on the video that are watching the video right now who have been bullied as well. All right. It's not fun to get bullied. All right, so these people that were bullying the Israelites were called the Midianites. Boo! Oh, let's try that again. We weren't ready for that one. This week, we are going to learn about another nation of people who started bullying the Israelites, called the Midianites. Boo! The Midianites. Boo! Had been attacking Israel for seven years. The Midianites boom, swooped into the towns on their camels, destroying the Israelites' crops and capturing all their animals, leaving nothing for the Israelites to eat. Finally, the Israelites turned to God and cried out for help. Help us, God! God chose a man named Gideon to serve as a judge over Israel and rescue the Israelites. An angel appeared to Gideon and told him he would be a mighty hero because God would be with him. Gideon questioned how he could save Israel because he was the least in his family. I think we've heard about somebody else who was the least in his family that was a mighty warrior. Can you think of anybody? No. What about David? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. He felt unimportant. The angel of the Lord said, I will be with you. You will destroy the wicked Midianites. Boom! As if you were fighting against one man. Gideon needed to depend on God for victory. Yay! Yay! The Midianites, boom, Amalekites, and people of the east joined together to fight against Israel. Ooh, that's a lot of people. Gideon, with God's help, called for the warriors. And 32,000 showed up. God stopped Gideon. He told Gideon he had too many warriors. How can he have too many? That's not just like the Midianites. You missed it. He told Gideon he had too many warriors. If they won the battle, the Israelites would brag about how they did it on their own. So God told him to tell the men, if any were afraid or unsure, to return, to return home. So 22,000 men left. Whoa. Wow, that many were afraid, and they were the warriors? Oh, my. <clears throat> so that left only 10,000 men to fight the battle. <clears throat> now, remember, they were fighting against the Midianites, Boom! Amalekites, and the people of the East. That's a lot of people, and they're going to go against them with 10,000 people? <gasps> I think but God told Gideon... There were still too many men. Oh, yeah. This time, God told him to tell the 10,000 warriors <laughs> to go down to the spring to drink water. He told Gideon to watch the men and divide them into two groups. He told Gideon to watch the men and divide them into two groups. The first group was the men who cupped the water in their hands drink. The second group of men who knelt down and drank with their mouths directly in the stream were sent home. Now, with only 300 men and God's promise to deliver them, whoa, 300? Yikes, that's not very many. <clears throat> they were positioned just above the Midianites. Mm. Oh, we forgot. Oh, no. Okay. Now with only 300 men and God's promise to deliver them, they are positioned just above the Midianites. Oh! Uh, above their camp. How would you feel if you were Gideon and only had three men to attack all of the Midianites? Say boo! Boo! And then they would attack So how would you feel? I wouldn't feel so great. No, you wouldn't feel 
so great. Sammy, how would you feel? Uh, I would feel bad. You'd feel bad? Ooh, maybe we'd feel afraid? How would you feel? Well, I would be very nervous. And so was Gideon. So God made a way for Gideon to be confident of Israel's victory. Israel's victory. Yay! God told Gideon to sneak down to the Midianite Ooh. camp and listen to the enemy soldiers talking. When Gideon did this, he heard one of the soldiers telling some of the other soldiers about his dream. He said he had a dream God was going to give Gideon and the Israelites the victory Yay! over the Midianites. Ooh. Gideon realized that God was working out every detail. Gideon worshipped God. Gideon went back to the camp and told the men to get up because God was going to fight the battle and win the victory. Yay! He divided the men into three groups and gave each and each man two things. That means that 100 men were in each group. That's right. 100 men were in each group. All right. So he gave each man two things. A ram's horn trumpet and a clay pot with a lit torch in it. The pot hid the light of the torch so that the Israelites wouldn't be seen. Gideon told them to watch and do exactly as he did. Gideon took 100 warriors with him and sent the others to the other side of the Midianites camp. They reached the edge of the enemy camp during the middle of the night and surrounded the camp. At Gideon's signal, all 300 men blew their trumpets and broke their clay pots at the same time. All the soldiers held their torches high in the air so that the dark was suddenly filled with light as they surrounded the Midianite <laughs> camp. The 300 soldiers shouted, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. <laughs> Imagine what it would have been like to wake up to that. Ooh. The trumpets, the shouting, and all the light surrounding you when it was supposed to be dark. And I heard that the Midianites were so confused they were actually fighting each other. Whoa. How would you feel if you got woken up with torches and and um, and shouting and trumpets? I wouldn't feel so good. I would be like, I gotta kill what I gotta kill the other Midianites. Really? You didn't even say that. All right. As each Israelite warrior stood at his position around the camp, or like, oh, don't interrupt, Sammy. The Midianites woke up in such a confused panic. As they tried to escape, they began killing each other with their swords. Gideon and his warriors. Did what God told them to do. God gave them a mighty victory. Yay! Yay! Right. Now we're going to do our craft. So have your parents um, click on the link to print off the, the craft that we're going to do today. It's the uh, on the back side of the field notes. So you have your field notes, and you can print off this first page too. And then you might want to set, uh, print off the other one on a separate piece of paper because we're going to do something different with this, All right? So, what we have here is a picture, well, four pictures of the different events that happened in this story. All right? So, what you're going to do is you're going to color the pictures, each of them, and then you're going to cut them out, and then you're going to line them up on a piece of construction paper 
to make a comic strip. So make sure they're in the right order and you can glue them to the construction paper and have your very own storyboard. So while you're working on your craft, I'm going to read a little something here. Um, all right. God did not get angry with Gideon for asking over and over for ways to know God would be with him and help him. On the night of the battle, when Gideon may have still been afraid, God sent him to the enemy camp to overhear a soldier's dream about the Israelites' victory, which gave Gideon courage. God loved the Israelites and wanted to free them from the evil Midianites who had bullied them for seven long years. He chose Gideon to lead them to a great victory. God cares about what happens to his people. <clears throat> what about us? <clears throat> do we always do a good job trusting God? We want to make sure things are going to go the way we think they should, instead of allowing God to lead us in his way. God's way might always be best, but it's not always easy. I like when things are easy, don't you? Yeah, me too. When we are trying to learn to trust God more, we have to work on it every day in little ways, so that when we need to do it in big ways, it's easier for us. Gideon learned to trust God. God was with Gideon, and he gave Gideon strength when he needed it. God will do the same thing for us when we need strength to trust God too, if we let him. Who helped Gideon win a great victory with Gideon's God? All right. So God told Gideon, I will be with you. And God did what he said and helped him win. Knowing God was with him helped Gideon have the courage to fight the battle. We know God is worthy of our trust. He keeps all his promises. He gives us the commands in the Bible for our guidance and protection. We can depend on him to help us in every situation. Knowing who is with us and what he is like can help us have courage when we are afraid. So we're going to go over our memory verse. But you are a forgiving God. You are kind and full of mercy. You do not become angry quickly. And you have a great love. So you did not leave them. And that comes from Nehemiah 9, 17. All right, so we're going to look at the second part. Um, you do not become angry quickly. And you have great love. All right. So there was a boy named Andy, and he didn't want to be afraid, but he was. There was a bigger kid in the next grade who just wouldn't stop bullying him. Things had stopped at school, but Andy would still wake up in the middle of the night and imagine the boy was in his room and cry out. His dad would come running into his room and just sit by his bed until Andy calmed down and went back to sleep. Sometimes it would take an hour or more for him to fall back to sleep, but his dad never complained. He just sat there next to Andy. This went on for weeks, and Andy felt bad about disrupting everybody's sleep. One night, his dad said, if I have to come in every night for the rest of your life, I won't mind. I want you to know I am here for you. Well, God is patient and loving with us, too. He understands us, even though we are sometimes afraid. He patiently helps and guides us. The more we get to know God, the more we will trust him. So go ahead and practice saying the verse. And I'll put it up again for you. It says, but you are a forgiving God. You are kind and full of mercy. You do not become angry quickly. And you have great love. So you did not leave them. Nehemiah 9, 17. All right. We finished with our crafts. Demi, you want to show yours? I'm going to write some words on it. Tomorrow. Okay, and Penny, would you like to 
the sugars. And I have bicarbonate down here. All right, very good job, girls. Okay, so um, what we should remember from this week's lesson is that Gideon was afraid, and when he was afraid, he was missing out. But when Gideon remembered that God was with him always, uh, then he got to do very big and exciting things. So when we're facing something scary, we should always remember that God is with us. All right. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and a great week. And come right back here next week, and we will um, we will do this again. Bye. 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 Bye.